it's April in the home garden and we are now several weeks past our last frost date, which is the last day of March. And although I know that some people in the UK have been experiencing late frosts, I haven't. And so I have a lot more confidence in planting plants outside and sowing seeds directly into beds. I haven't done any so far, but today is the day. And before I start sowing seeds into that first no-dig bed that I built, I want to have a little dig around just to see how well the layers have incorporated. And I'm sure you're curious as well. You might be thinking about building your own no-dig beds this year. Up until now, I've been starting my seeds under cover. So in the greenhouse and in the house, under grow lights. I have now put away the grow lights. I won't be using them again until early next year. And I have a lot of plants on the go. I've got to repot up a lot of the plants that are in the house in particular. So the tomatoes and the aubergines, the peppers are all screaming for more space. And they will be going into the polycrub. Now the polycrub has had some work in it over the past weekend and I'm going to show you what we've been doing. It's not quite ready though, so I do need to pot on those plants and give them space to grow for the next couple of weeks or so. I'm going to show you all of the plants in the greenhouse, in the house, in the garden. We're going to have a look around, but there's also quite a few to-dos on my list. I bought a rose arbor for the David Austin roses. Yes, I took them with from the old house. They've been growing happily in pots, but they also are demanding more space. So let's get started and we'll see how far we get with the to-do list. The veg patch now has 10 of these no-dig beds. This is the first one that I built. And as you can see, we're in the process of putting wood chip paths all around. I've not grown anything in this bed since I built it. And the only thing that I've done is weed a bit. No dig doesn't mean no weeds. There are still weeds that pop up. You can see a couple along the edge of the bed over there. I can see a dandelion and some grass, but it reduces weeds and it's just so easy. Now, after the first application of compost, there is a new layer, and that's just because that first layer sunk down. That's natural. But what I'm really curious about in this no-dig bed is what it looks like under the soil. Now, it's been quite dry, but I thought, let's start here in the middle, and let's just see what it's like. It's going down pretty easily. All right, it's gone down a full spades depth. Now I've not dug this at all. This was just grass when I started. You can watch that entire video to see how I've made this. And let's see if we can cut out a square. Or actually, this is pulling up just nicely. It is filled with worms. It is dark and luscious under there. Plant roots would absolutely love that. Let me just pull this compost away from the bottom. It keeps falling in. You can see the layers of the soil and the compost really clearly. I have clay soil here, and so that's that lighter layer down below. There's no sign of the cardboard. There's no sign of the grass. It is literally soil and then compost. I would say that that's a really good result and I've also found some worms digging this. Let's take apart this little clump here and see if we can find some more. It's really lush and moist. There's a worm right there. There's other kinds of insects in here as well that I can see. Hello, little worm. I'm so glad to have worms in this garden. No worms at the allotment, as you know, or very few. And so that is how no dig works. These really easy no dig beds for beginners, like I show you in my previous video. It gives you essentially a bed that you can create without any digging and it's bottomless. So plant roots will grow right down through the compost and into the soil if they want to. 
and also because the soil is covered in this pretty thick layer of compost it stays moist which is really important we've not had rain here properly in probably 10 days but you wouldn't know it by touching and feeling the soil from this angle you can really see the slope I'm having to work with here in the garden and why I decided to put wooden edging around my no-dig beds this is an optional feature but I think that it's going to help keep the compost in my beds rather than eroding down into the rest of the garden. I've done a little bit of weeding in here. I've leveled it out again. And what I'm going to be doing next is sowing some seeds. And I have a stack of seeds here and they're all different types of salad greens and salad onions. And what I'm thinking about doing, and I've never done this before, is sowing one row of a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and not labeling them. I think labeling is important, but since this entire bed is going to be a mixture of salad greens, why not? Let's see how it, how it does. And then over the coming weeks, I will be putting in more rows. So hopefully this entire bed will keep me in various types of of different types of leaves and oniony greens that we can use in fresh salads. And then I will also be putting in some seedlings that I've started off earlier in here as well. So radishes and some other salad greens like some baby lettuce as well. And then hopefully this will start producing very soon. Welcome to the dining room, AKA the plant nursery. I've taken over the entire table. Uh, as you can imagine, we've not eaten dinner in here for a while, but a lot of these plants will start to move outside and into the polycrub very soon. I've just noticed that the Bulgarian giant leek that I sowed not too long ago is up. Although a lot of the seeds that I sowed for the dye and soap garden haven't germinated, except for the matter, which is good, very good. Other plants that I have in here are globe artichokes. I started these from seed. I've got some more potatoes to go out, including some that I bought from the supermarket. And I just really love this type of potato, so I'm, I'm gonna grow them again. Quite a few more that need to go out. The allotment, has quite a bit of potatoes already. We'll visit the allotment next week and then you'll see. Ooh, the popcorn has germinated. Now this is a type of corn that is not sweet corn, it is literally popcorn. Some people don't realize that it's a different type of corn variety. And the sticky traps are doing their job. You see all the little fungus gnat flies all over the surface there. I've got quite a few set up. This entire tree over here is sunflowers. They haven't germinated yet. And then over here, there are various pumpkins and squash. And then of course, all the plants that have germinated long ago and that desperately need to be potted up and then moved out into the polycrub. Once all the beds are built in there, look at these tomatoes. And over here we have a load more tomatoes and they have all outgrown their little pots and modules and that's what I'm going to be doing next is putting them into larger pots. Just outside here in the grass there is quite the lineup of young plants all needing potting up and just beyond them you'll notice I have a brand new floor in the potting shed. This is luxury vinyl tile and it, I've been begging Josh to put it in since we moved in and he helped put in the, the plywood floor and he's a floor layer so sometimes he has half a box of this type of material left over from a job and half of that and I've been asking just put in a, a mishmash of different types of flooring and I finally got my wish but this time it's all nice same type of flooring and this is going to help me keep the potting shed much cleaner. With potting up the young plants, most of them, all I'm going to do is put them into slightly larger pots with some fresh 
potting compost and plant them just to the level that they're growing in the pots. The tomatoes are different, so I'm gonna show you what I'm going to do with those. This is peat-free potting mix or compost as it's called in Britain and I've pre-moistened it with some water and it's good practice to always do that. It comes out of the bags quite dry and yes I use bagged compost for most of my seed sowing and for any plants that are in pots and I do that because it's relatively sterile so there's no microbes or seeds in it that are going to affect my plants or to compete with them. And I save any homemade compost for using out in the beds. Now with planting these tomatoes, I'm just going to put about an inch of compost on the bottom, firm it in a little bit, and then take these plants out of their pots. And I haven't watered these today, so it's, going to be relatively easy to pull them out. If you water plants before you pull them out of the modules or the pots, it can get a little bit messy sometimes. And that is a really good root system there. So into the new pot it goes. And as I'm filling around the sides, I'm gonna firm it down with my fingers as well. There's all different types of materials in this peat-free potting mix, and there's lots of different brands out there that have their different mixes, and it will be a mixture of green waste compost, cocoa core, they'll sometimes put perlite and vermiculite in, also a lot of wood, so wood chip that's been partially composted, and it's a lot more eco-friendly to use peat-free than to use potting mixes that have peat in them. It's getting firmed in there and the seed leaves are just above the soil surface. I wanna put a, a little bit more in. It's gonna be a nice healthy plant and I imagine in a couple of weeks when it's time to put this out into the polycrub, this is going to be a much larger plant. Make sure to put that label back in the pot. I've finished potting up all of those plants and I've put them in the greenhouse. So let's have a look at what's growing over here. So on the decking here, as well as in the greenhouse. And there are a couple of new plants, unexpected plants that I am quite excited about. I did not know that you could grow these and they've popped up on their own. There's a white one over there in the pallet planter and there's a striped species over here. Now Maggie has taken to sleeping in this pallet planter pretty much all day every day for the past week, two weeks maybe. This is the first time I've seen Portia in here and these two, I wouldn't say they're enemies, they tolerate one another so this is big seeing them together hanging out or at least allowing each other within the other the others chill out area i've done a little bit of a reorg in here little groups of plants everywhere first of all the tomato plants are all here on the main bench and now that they're potted up in larger pots you can see that there are quite a few of them i can't remember how many different varieties i'm growing but i think it's seven or eight different types and I may yet add to the collection with some swaps of plants. And then the aubergines and peppers are over here and also up here with the loofah. And these are globe artichokes and I've just potted them on as well. Below here, there are different seedlings that need to be planted out very soon. And also the New Zealand yams are back here. And this is the new variety over here, the orange. And these are self-saved okas on the right, and they look so much bigger and healthier, don't they? They're the pink varieties. So I'm hoping that the orange ones will grow happy and healthy, and then next year I'll select some of the good tubers to grow on for 2023. Down below here, this here on the left, those two trays of young plants, those are all basil. 
and it started from just one supermarket basil plant and I've divided them up. The strongest have their own pots over here and these over here, these are clumps of smaller plants and I'm, I'm growing them together to see how they do. I have a video showing how to do this. This is how I grow my basil every single year. And in last week's video, I showed how to continue growing supermarket coriander. And if you look closely, you'll see that there's some happy and healthy green leaves towards the center. And some of the older ones are going a bit yellow down here, but this is continuing to grow. And I can take harvest off of this for about a month. I don't know if you're the same, but I tend to pick up a lot of plants thinking I'm going to plant them out soon and they end up languishing in pots for far too long. And so I've made it a mission, a goal to get most of them planted this year. And so I've started organizing them into different collections. All of these plants here in front of me, these are different plants that I'm going to be putting onto that slope bank behind the polycrub. And there's foxgloves in here, evening primrose, Japanese anemone, there are aqualegia and yarrow, loads in here, and they'll be planted up there along with some wildflower seeds. And then back here, these are all different plants that need to go into a flower border area that I wanna put below my office window. So we've got verbena back there, we've got monardas and echinacea, over here we've got some various different types of culinary herbs and I also have all of those Cape gooseberries that I took cuttings from last year and grew on in the house over the winter and the parent plant there on the left. Soft fruit, those need to go out into one of the beds and then out on the decking there's even more groups. All of these here in the front, these are all different types of perennial edible vegetables slash fruit and I'm not quite sure where to put them because I haven't planned a perennial bed but it really does look like I need one and those are kales there in the back those are the um, Taunton Dean kale I took cuttings last year from the plant in the allotment yes yes <laughs> he wants his moment <laughs> There's also um, perennial leeks, Welsh onions, Egyptian walking onions, skirret, some more artichoke, sea kale, rhubarb so much. And in the back, this is a, a plant that I was gifted and it is a black raspberry. And what is it called? Raspberry Glencoe. And I'm very excited about this because it's supposed to be absolutely delicious. With all of the plants that I have growing in pots and in the veggie pod and in containers, it can be a real challenge to keep them all healthy and watered, which is why I want to show you one of my tools that I use for helping. It's this little doodad that I have on my hose and it's just held there by magnets so I can pull it apart snaps back together and that should give you a clue as to what it is. This is a plant surge water magnetizer and it sounds like some kind of magic and it did to me when I first heard of it and started using it but magnetized water has been shown to give bigger blossoms, bigger fruits, bigger plants and also it helps the plant to stay hydrated for longer and so I have this on my hose and don't ever have to really think about it. And so when I water using my hose, my plants benefit from that and you can't go wrong. So if you are interested in having the same product, I'll leave you a, a link down in the video description. You can order these in the US, I think throughout North America and also in Britain. Yesterday, while Josh was building the second bed for the polycrub, I started building this from flat pack. And this is where the David Austin roses are going to live from here on out. And a lot of you have been asking, 
what happened to those roses that I had at the old house? Well, when we moved, I did decide in the end to take them with and I dug them up, put them in the pots and they've been living here for the last year in those pots and they're happy and healthy, but they need space to grow, both their roots and their stems, their climbers. And so I've put this together, got Josh's help in the end as well. This is definitely a two person job, but I also dug the holes in and cemented it in because it is very windy here on the Isle of Man. And today I'm going to dig both of those David Austin roses on either side. And hopefully by the end of summer, we'll see some climbing action that isn't just Maggie and some flowers. And this will be just such a lovely way to walk in and be introduced to the vegetable garden. It's going to look beautiful especially since I know what those flowers look like because they grew beautifully on the old trellis and I can't wait to see them in full bloom here at our new home. So far I've dug holes for the roses and I've also filled them with water and have allowed that to drain and that will help to keep the soil around the plants really moist and it won't draw moisture from the plant itself and the compost around its roots. Now I'm just going to be planting these directly in the hole so no additional fertilizers or anything like that it should be fine and then I'll be backfilling with the soil that I've dug out and then mulching a good layer of compost on the top and the compost will help to feed the plant, it will reduce the amount of weed competition around the plant and also it will help to keep the soil underneath moist. And as we're going into spring and summer, that's going to be really important for plants like this that are established but also need to establish in a new place. All right, I've taken this guy out of its pot, just trying to find the main stem, it's this one here, and I'm going to point that towards the rose arbor. I have cemented these in. The cement will be fine. It should not affect the plant at all. It's all set and everything. And as soon as I get this in the hole and, and plant it with some soil around the uh, plant itself, I'll water it and then let it get on with what it wants to do, grow and produce beautiful flowers. Let's go have a look at what Josh finished up yesterday. He works so quickly. Having a skilled tradesman in the house is, is definitely helpful <laughs> when you have quite a few building projects. Looking really good. It's the exact same size as the other one. So this first bed, we'll scoot it over to that wall. It'll bump up right against the edges of the black pipes coming down and this one here all the way that side. And so the last bed will be a little bit shorter and will go in the middle. It's really starting to look like a vegetable garden, isn't it? Wow. All that hard work really does pay off just a little bit at a time. It doesn't have to be all in the same week. It can be stretched out over weeks or months, even years. It's all looking really good though. And the bare root trees, and also the hedging is all starting to come into leaf and flower. Let's go have a look at the hedging. I have two different sets of hedging, one from Ken Muir and also one from Hope's Grove Nurseries. So these are all the Ken Muir and I put them in first. Lots and lots of leaves. And then The hedging that came from Hope's Grove Nurseries is a little bit behind, but there are still leaves popping up on it. And the same goes for the hedging that is back behind the polycrop. The peas that uh, I planted in here, they're doing all right. They're flowering. I hope that they start growing a little bit more. They are putting on quite a few pea flowers though, so they might decide not to grow as tall as I would like. I've planted quite a few cabbage plants, little seedlings, 
back here and they have put on some size. Now, interestingly, I sowed the seeds for these young plants at the same time as the cabbage over here, these behemoths. The only difference is that I planted those young plants out direct into this bed late last year. And these ones, I kept them in the small containers and I planted them out about a month ago. And they will continue to grow and will probably get just as big as the other cabbages. Maggie, she's not really a lap cat at all. She's not even that cuddly, at least during the day, but she is a good garden companion, garden menace. I've got quite a bit done in the past few days, week even, not everything. Didn't get to sowing up this bank with seed or planting out the plants that I have set aside for it, but there's time for that and everything else. April is one of these months that it is so incredibly busy and not just with a seed sowing schedule, but also maintaining seedlings that have already germinated, keeping on top of watering, staking. This is where the work of gardening really begins and it, it truly is a labor of love and finding a good system for managing your garden during April, May and June is, I would say, really important to being a happy gardener, a non-stress gardener, but regardless, you will be a tired gardener and I am certainly very tired right now. There is a lot to do here. Obviously you've heard all about it in this video. The allotments, I'm going to be continuing with work up there, planting out more potatoes, more low maintenance vegetables as well. And I also have a new gadget that I'll be introducing you to next week. One that I'm quite excited about because it creates energy for free. So it's solar powered and uh, has a lot of different applications in the garden. And also if you are a camper, things like that. So I'm gonna be introducing you to that as well next week. Oh, it's gonna be nice being at the allotment. It's just so peaceful. It's kind of my, my happy place. And I look forward to that video then. Also, I want to let you know, it is the one year anniversary of my book, A Woman's Garden, Grow Beautiful Plants and Make Useful Things. A full year has passed since it came out. A full year has passed since we've moved here to the house. Whew, where has the time gone? But to celebrate, I have reduced the price of signed copies of my book. And you can find that on my website, lovelygreens.co.uk. And I'll leave a link down in the video description. Let me know if you have my book as well and what you enjoyed about it. If you have any favorite projects or parts of it. Thank you so much for watching this time and I will see you next week at the allotment for another Lovely Greens video. Bye for now.